Hello friends, it's been about two years since I did a video on Hewlett Packard calculators. Today we're going to look at the HP 12C Platinum. This calculator is intended for finance calculations. Now some of you who know me as an electrical engineer may ask why is an engineer like you doing a review of a finance guy's calculator instead of a scientific version calculator? And the answer to that question is twofold. First of all, Mark Josidis, owner of MacEffex, purveyor of amazingly excellent clear cases for vintage Apple computers, very kindly and at his own expense, shipped me his spare 12C Platinum calculator for the express purpose of doing this review. So uh, without his kindness, this review would not have been possible. The second reason is that HP doesn't make, unfortunately, the 15C scientific edition calculator anymore. The scientific edition is, it looks exactly like this, it just has the scientific functions on it. HP only sells the 12C Platinum, which is what we have here today, and the regular 12C, and I'll outline the differences between them in this review. So let's get started with a little bit of background. The 12C is a member of Hewlett Packard's Voyager series calculators that was introduced 39 years ago in 1981, retailing for US $150, which translates to about $429 today. The 12C was named after the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 probes, which were sent into space in 1977. Interestingly, those same probes served as inspiration for V'ger in the 1979 Star Trek The Motion Picture Film. Furthermore, the 12C had a ROM-RAM display driver chip, note the two R's and two D's in that name, which they lovingly named R2-D2 after the droid in the 1978 Star Wars A New Hope film. Battery life on the 12C is a mind-boggling 10 to 12 years, thanks to a Silicon on Sapphire, or SOS, nut processor in combination with three SR44 silver oxide batteries. The original 12C can also use three LR44 alkaline batteries, although with slightly reduced battery life. SOS is a process technology that was originally intended for military and space applications, especially used to produce very low power devices. It is said that the Voyager 1 space probe has RCA built SOS components inside. Two key design goals at HP were to, number one, create a calculator that had extremely long battery life, and as I just mentioned, they achieved that aim. The second goal at HP was to create a calculator that could take a fall from a desk onto a hard floor, such as concrete. Now, this calculator is on loan to me, so I'm not going to be able to do a drop test for you in this review, but suffice it to say, it is a reliable and very durable design that you can count on. I should mention that neither of the currently manufactured 12C Platinum or 12C calculators have the original nut processor, so you're not going to get the same decade of battery life out of them. However, the battery life is still numbered in years. The upside of owning the newer models, though, is that the Platinum version, which is what I'm reviewing today, is six times faster than the 1981 nut processor was, and the regular 12C, which has a gold finish instead of this silver finish, is 60 to 90 times faster, thanks to its ARM processor. When comparing the modern 12C to the modern 12C Platinum, perhaps the biggest difference is the presence of an algebraic entry mode on the Platinum version, in addition to RPN entry. The regular 12C only has RPN entry, and I'll explain the differences between those two entry modes if you're not familiar with them uh, later after the unboxing. A second difference between the modern 12C and the modern 12C Platinum is that the Platinum version also has a backspace or a delete key, which the original 12C and even the modern 12C do not have. There are other more minor differences between the two calculators, and I'm not gonna take up time in this video to go through those, but I did put links for you in the text description below, so please expand that out by clicking show more, and then investigate those links to hear all of the nitty gritty details. 
Unfortunately, you high schoolers, the 12C series is not really made for you in that it's not certified for the ACT or SAT exams. However, the 12C series, including the Platinum, is certified for many finance-specific exams, including the CFP, CFA, CMA, and the GARP FRM. So let's get to the unboxing. And here is the product packaging. Don't let the little creases that you see in this packaging fool you. Uh, Mark Josidas told me that he has had this in his desk for a while, uh, and he left it unopened, so uh, some of that is not indicative of what you're necessarily going to get when you buy one from Amazon or another place. Plus, it also endured international shipping uh, to get to me. And here is what the back looks like, telling you some of the basic features of the calculator, but we won't go into that. We'll just jump into the opening here. And it uh, says up here to cut on this dotted line and then pull the tab to open. I suppose I could use scissors, but I'll just use this little knife for now. I think it means this tab, but you know, I'm not one of those professionals who easily gets packages like this open and some of you will chast my, chastise me in the comments section for it, but I'm going to do it the way that makes me feel good to get inside. And here are the package contents we have, yes, even in late 2020, we have a CD-ROM, uh, which most of you will not be able to use unless you actually have a CD-ROM drive. Then we have this nice case, obviously it's not leather, it's some kind of simulated version, but it's got a nice metal um, HP logo here on it, and then on the back you've got a place you can put a business card or maybe some uh, contact information for you. And then of course we have the calculator itself and the quick start guide, which is uh, 20, 30, 33 pages long. I should mention that this case is extremely stiff and um, at least for the first time when putting the calculator in, it's not really the easiest thing in the world to get in there. It's really super form fitting. It almost feels like it's squeezing down on the calculator too much, but um, it does make a perfect fit to get it in there. And there's a little bit of overlap over here so that the actual edge of the calculator is not as far out as these edges are. So if you were to drop it with the case inside, it would hit the edges. And these are hard edges, by the way. I mean, this case, it's soft like simulated leather, but I think it has some kind of cardboard inside to make it really stiff. So this is going to uh, definitely better protect your calculator. Um, but it does add some bulk to it. So you need to keep that in mind. On the back, the calculator has four rubber feet on the bottom to keep it from sliding around on your table. It says it takes two CR2032 batteries and uh, it says here made in the Philippines and it gives you some sample calculations. Also the battery door is a, one of those slide and take off time types which you can see the two batteries here. These batteries uh, came with the calculator. Now in terms of thickness looking at the calculator from the side here compared to my 50G on the side, we can see that the 12C is a much thinner calculator. Even so, when I saw this calculator 12C for the first time, I thought it was, well, a little bit thicker seeing it in person than it was in photographs. However, if we compare this to my HP Prime on the side, we see it is really quite comparable, hardly any different in terms of thickness when the feet are included. I have my uh, iPhone 7 in a case here. So when we compare, it's, well, pretty much the same. So that can give you some idea of how thick this will be if you're going to carry it around in a shirt pocket. 
Okay, I'll now show you how well it fits into a pocket. Again, this was really designed to be that size. Now, your mileage is going to vary. I have a variety of button-up shirts like this and all manner of different pocket sizes. Uh, what you're really concerned with mostly is, is about the depth of the pocket, although to some extent the width will matter too. The 12C, as you can see, fits perfectly inside this pocket. However, this pocket has a little button on the top and because of the height of this 12C calculator, I'm unable to button that. The disadvantage to being unable to button the top of your pocket or have a flap to come over is that if you bend over to tie your shoes, whoop, <laughs> probably the <laughs> calculator will pop out. But as I mentioned to you before, the good news is this calculator was designed to be very robust, to be dropped at least from the height of a desk onto a hard surface. So most likely it would survive such a fall just be aware that uh, even though it will survive, you probably will get some dings in it if you let it to fall onto a hard surface, especially on gravel or something gritty like that. Let's now do some sample calculations. I have my other calculators lined up here because I'm going to do the calculation at first on the 12C, and then I'll go with the slowest to the fastest calculator, the 48GX, all the way to the prime and show you how it's done on each of those. Now because these three are not dedicated finance calculators like the 12C, there's a little bit of setup that we have to do. So I'll show you here on the GX, we'll power on. And then we do this right arrow, the blue button here, and then number seven for solve. And it gives us various selections, but we want to go to the bottom one to choose finance and hit enter. And it says time value of money up there and that's the mode we want to be in. For the 50G, we have something a little bit different. Instead of going into the solver here, what we want to do is hit the apps button. And it's a little bit fiddly because you can see it's not listed here on the initial menu, but what it is is the numeric solver. We'll enter that. And then we can now see the solve finance. And you'll notice that the two screens are almost completely the same. Next on the HP Prime, what we have here, normally if you go to the Home button or the Cast button, you'll see nothing at all. Uh, but when you touch the Apps key here, then you'll have various apps that you can uh, open. And what we want to do, you can see it right here, is Finance. And then we'll do Number key here, and there it is. Uh, this is, well, it's a little bit different look, but pretty much the same. Uh, layout is as these two calculators here. All right, the first thing is to turn on the calculator. You can see we have a number in the memory, so we want to always, always before our calculations clear out all the memories. So push this button once, then do F, the same button again, F, and this key, so all of the memories are now cleared. We're going to do a sample problem out of the HP documentation where you're hypothetically going to buy a house using a 30-year loan at 6.5% annual interest. The house costs $180,000, but you're going to make a payment of 30,000. So 180 minus 30 is 150,000 is what you're going to finance, for example, with a bank loan. And the question is, how much is the monthly payment going to be? And we have an assumption that payments will start at the end of the first period. So what we want to do here is now that our calculator is cleared out, we can start typing in information. But remember, we want a monthly figure. We know that it is 30 years, but the period is going to go into the end here. But if we type in, if we just punch in 30 the way it is, then that's going to be years. And actually, we want months. And so what we do is we do the blue key G because down below it says 12 by. And then we do in, and it does the math for us, 360, and it saves it in the number of periods here. So then we have 6.5% interest, but this is annual interest. And so we want to make sure it's monthly, and that's why you can see I's for interest here, but underneath in blue it says 12 divided by. So we're gonna do G and then I, and so it uh, divided 6.5 by 12 to get 0 0.54, and that is saved as our interest on a monthly basis there. 
Next, we know that we're going to finance a loan of 150000 So I'm going to type in this E to the X and get three zeros at the end. And that is going to be our present value, PV. You can see it drops in 150000 into present value. And now, uh, what we want are the monthly payments. And as you can, may expect, PMT stands for payments. So all we do have to do is just press that button, and we get $948.10. Now, the reason this is negative is because the value, 150000 that we entered, was positive. And so if you enter a positive number at the beginning, then you're going to get a negative result. However, if we would have typed in minus 150000 then we would have gotten a positive result. But basically, there are different ways I can explain it. But um, uh, one way to think of this as a negative number is that's your cash outlay. Right, you're gonna to have to deduct from however much money you have, so that's one way uh, of thinking about it. But you can see that this HP12C Platinum pretty much did that calculation almost instantly. If there's any kind of delay, it will say the word "running" on the LCD. So on the 48GX, we're gonna just type in 360 directly into the in value, the periods there, and we need to use our arrow keys. Uh, to move around, it says here we need to do the interest rate. Now, the interest rate is 6.5. And it says payments per year 12. Okay, so that's why we can still leave it as a 6.5 in there. And then present value is 150000 And then payment is what we want to solve for, so we hit solve. And we see here that it is the same $948.10. So it's, it's a little bit different in, in the way that you have to type it in. And that's why I'm showing it to you, so you know how it differs from the 12C. Pretty much the same thing here. That's why I typed in all the numbers. We have payment selected, and now we'll just go over here to solve. We can see instantly it comes out 948.10. And of course, same thing here. Um, you can see pretty much almost exactly the same as the 50G and 48GX. We have payment selected, and we just tap on the screen since it's a touch screen, and immediately we get 948.10. We're now going to do another problem that takes a little bit more processing power. Uh, what price should you pay on April 28th, 2004, for a six and three quarter percent U.S. Treasury bond that matures on June 4th, 2018, if you want a yield of eight and a quarter percent? And we need to assume that we normally express dates in the month, day, year format. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because it takes a little bit more processing power. So, uh, again, I'm just doing this out of the HP example problem documentation. Uh, we're gonna, we've already cleared out all the memories here, so I'm going to skip that part for you and just type in 8.25 as our interest, 6.75 as our payment, and then we want to do blue key G and number five, which stands for month, day, year. Then we're going to type in a date, 4.28.2004. And then we're going to enter that. And then we're going to type in another date, 6.04.2018. And this time we're going to push the F button and then price, which is Y to the X. You can see price above that. And watch the screen. You see it showed the word running for about a second. So even though this is six times faster than the original 12C, uh, it took a little about a, a second for it to do. So I assume, I don't have an original 12C, but I assume if if that six by multiplier is correct, it would take about six seconds for the original 1981 version to do this calculation. So this is the bond price. And then if we press plus, we get the total price, including the accrued interest. I'm now going to give you a comparison uh, with the 12 C Platinum's keys to my other calculators, but what I can tell you right now is the key presses and sounds of this calculator are most similar to my Prime, although not completely the same. 
Um, especially the difference here is that these keys push down more than the prime keys, and so the sound is a little bit different because of that. Unfortunately, I do not have a 1981 version with which to compare. I've read on the internet that there have been some bad keyboard versions of the 12C, and then uh, over time, the original is considered to be great, perfect, ideal. Uh, but some of the more modern versions in the 2000s were not so great from what I've read. And whether or not this is classified as a great one, I cannot say. But first and foremost is just the feel. Before we press anything, the feel of the keys, it's a matte finish on top. It feels very nice to the touch. And the Prime, it's also matte, but it's a little bit smoother. It's by no means glossy in appearance or in texture. But I would say that if I could describe it better, um, the feel of this matte texture is a little bit rougher. It's not really coarse sandpaper type of rough, but it's a very fine sandpaper feel. And this, this is, um, I would say, a super fine sandpaper feel. Now, in terms of the sound, what I'm going to do is take my microphone off my lav mic and I'm going to put it in the shot so you can hear it a little bit better as I push. So I'm sure you could hear that fairly well. This is louder than the Prime. I would say um, almost not quite as bad as a typewriter, but comparatively speaking, it, it is much noisier. But again, you have much more tactile feedback. Your fingers push down much more on the 12C Platinum than they do on the Prime. Which do my fingers like? Of course I like this one better because I like to have my finger go down more. Now, obviously, to a certain limit, of course, but, um, you know, I typed on teletypes in the 1970s, and, I mean, I old, old keyboards of old, you know, where you'd really have a lot of key travel. This gives you a lot of key travel on all of the keys, and I really like that a lot. This one is not bad. I mean, I'm not saying that the Prime is bad. Just comparatively speaking, you get more with this, so... I would like this more, but nevertheless, I, I still like this. It's it's a fine um, a fine keyboard in my opinion, a keypad. Nothing necessarily bad to say about it. And of course, the merit of the Prime is it's just not quite as noisy. Uh, if you're in a very quiet environment in a library, then I guess <laughs> depending on how fast you're you're stroking the keys, uh, you're, you're going to hear this more but your, your fingers will definitely uh, like this more, I believe. Now, if I were to swap out my Prime with my 48GX, the sound is even more muted here. And key travel is... Mm, yeah. Key travel on the 48GX is less than this 12C Platinum. You get more key travel with this. But you can, you can tell, well, I'll put my mic up here so you can hear it. So you can see this is a very, very quiet keyboard. And the feel is It's a, um, how can I describe it? It's, it gives you tactile feedback, but I would say it's, this is less bouncy. Maybe a little bit more spongy. Maybe that's the proper way to say it. A little bit more spongy feel. And this is just like bouncing your finger off of it almost. It's, it's, um, Again, not, not, not in my opinion bad, quite, quite good actually, but again, you, you've got the noise factor. And then we have the 50G, which mm, I would say it's not too noisy, but 
the keys don't travel very much. I would say it's roughly on par with the prime. And you'd think they'd travel more because the keys kind of stick up pretty well from the quite a ways from from the base of the calculator, but yeah, quite a bit more on the 12C. And I'll put my mic up there for you. So, you know, this, it's not a perfectly quiet keyboard, as quiet as the 48GX, but it's still quieter than the 12C. So out of all of my calculators, um, this by far is the noisiest. Okay, I totally forgot about my 28S. <laughs> this calculator is dead silent. It is super quiet. I'll put my mic up for you. The sound you're hearing is the creaking of the body. Now these keys are smooth, these are glossy not matte, but I never found that to be a problem. This was my workhorse when I was in engineering school uh, from 1989 through uh, 94. And um, some of the keys don't work anymore, but it is just absolutely quiet. So yes, this, even better than the 48GX, this uh, is the quietness winner. Key travel is on par with um, maybe a little bit less a little bit less than the 48GX, about the same as the Prime and the 50G. Let's now take a look at RPN versus algebraic usage modes. The default mode is set to RPN. How do we know that? You just look on the screen, you can see below the number 0.00 here, you can see RPN on the LCD. And the way RPN works, just to give you a five times five example, Instead of typing five times five equals, what we do with RPN is we type in five, we enter that, we type another five, and then the multiply. So the same with subtraction, you would just say, okay, let's clear this out. Uh, five, let's say we want to subtract two, we enter the five, and we type the two, and then we do subtract. That's a very overly simplistic way of explaining RPN, but I just want to say that is the fundamental difference between RPN and algebraic. Now, if we want to go to algebraic mode, for those of you who want to use this calculator but don't know how to use RPN or who absolutely refuse to learn it, I would encourage you to learn it because I think it's a lot better. But for those of you who don't want to learn it, it's fairly easy. You can see here under the CHS, or above the CHS key, it says RPN. We're already in that mode, so we don't need to do anything there. But the EEX key, you can see above that is, it says ALG for algebraic. So we want to press this modifier key, the F key, and then the EEX, and we can see on the display it changed to algebraic. So now I'll clear off the three, and I'll say five times five again, but this time do it in the normal way that many of you are accustomed to. Five times five equals. Or, clear it off, five minus two equals. So that's how you do uh, the switching between algebraic and RPN. And again, we can switch back just by doing F, C, H, S, and now it says RPN. So we can just say uh, two minus, and there it is. Now I'd like to show you two features that are not on the earlier versions of this HP 12C Platinum. Uh, because this version of the calculator, the Platinum, has been ar around for, oh goodness, more than 15 years. So this is the newest version as of October 2020 that you can buy on Amazon and in other places today. And it has a 
backspace and a uh, undo feature. We can see over here on the minus key below that in blue, it says a left arrow, that is backspace. And then on the divided key, we can see here, there's a kind of a loop, like you're going back function under there. Um, one or both of these functions, especially not this backspace, is not available on um, very old models of this calculator. And it's not available on any variant of the t regular 12C, at least not un until now. So just to show you the backspace, say you want to type in uh, 2.56. So you type in 2.55. Oops, I want to delete that last five. So how you do that is you hit G, which is the modifier, and then minus, and it deletes the five, and then you can type in your six. And yes, you can do it more than once. And even do it so that you can delete all of it if you want to. Okay, and then you can see here that there's the same symbol in blue under the divided key is here on the screen. So let's see what happens when we do G and divide it. It brings it back, right? Um, now it doesn't bring back the whole number, but it brings back part of the number. So let's, let's say let's clear this off. When we turn it off and turn it on, you can see that little symbol on the left disappears. So we can't go back once you turn the calculator off and on. But let's say we type in 5.56 and then we decide we want to clear that. We see the symbol there. We can basically undo our delete by doing shift to G, or the G and the divided by to get it back. So that is backspace and restore something that was deleted. Okay, let's now take a look at what's called the stack. Numbers stacked in memory is number way, another way you can think about it. It basically has uh, four levels. Um, there's a lot in the documentation that you can read and I would encourage you to read this documentation. But uh, basically what's shown on page 229 in the appendix uh, is what I'm going to just give you a brief overview now. We can see that there's T, Z, Y, and X registers. What you see on the screen when you type a number, that is X. Uh, and then if you enter a number, it's going to be placed in Y, but you will still be able to see that number on screen, which means it is also in X. So if we go through the procedure that's on page 229 here, we can see uh, we would type in three, and then the next step is we would press enter. And so we can see 3.00 on the screen, and that is stored in X, but it is also stored in Y. And then if we type in 4, that 4 is stored in X, but the 3 continues to be stored in Y. And how do we know this? Well, we, there's a key here that says X greater than, less than, Y. So if we press that, it will swap X and Y. So we can see 3 was in Y. It's now in X, but if we press it again, we can swap them again. Okay, so that's just confirming what I'm telling you here. And then if we go on uh, what it says in the manual, the next thing we will do is press multiply. So three times four we know is 12. And that means that it pulled the three out of Y and multiplied it with X. And it's putting this answer here on the screen, which is in register X. So that's why there's nothing in register Y, and we can confirm that by pressing the swap key, and it's zero. Swap it again, and there it is. So now if we type in five, enter, and then we have five in the X register, and five is also in the Y register, and then we do six. Now five is in the Y register, while six being displayed on the screen is in the X register. If we multiply that, we get 30. So the question is, what is in the Y register? Well, if we do the swap, we can see that it's 12. And we'll swap it back. 
And then what if we do addition? That will add the x and y registers, leaving the result in x, 42. So that means y is blank now. We can confirm that by swapping. It's blank. Swap back. Now we'll type in 7. So that means 42 was placed in the y register. 7 is now in the x register. And if we divide, we get 6. And there's nothing in the y register. We can confirm that by pushing this. I just want to show you the same thing and how it compares to the 48GX. On the scientific and graphing calculator series, this is basically what you're going to see on the 50G as well. Um, unfortunately, you know, Hewlett Packard doesn't sell these models anymore, but some of you may be able to find them on eBay or used. Um, I, some of you also may be familiar with some of the older HP calculators, so I want to show you how the bigger screen version calculators differ from that single line display calculators like the Voyager series. Uh, first of all, if we continue to do page 229 and we go back to the beginning again, we see that if we type in 3, it has a flashing arrow next to it, and it is just below stack level 1. All right, so we haven't entered it or anything. And that is appearing, uh, that would be just like if we were to have pressed 3 and did not enter it, on the 12C. So when we do actually press enter, then it is on stack level 1. So this differs from the 12C because on the 12C you've got 3 stored in X and 3 stored in Y. But here on the bigger screen calculators you basically have stack level 1 with 3. There is no x and y. They're stack level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it just keeps on going according to the amount of memory that you have. So let's type in 4. We're just going to keep going. And then we can also see that on our screen. Stack level 1 is still has 3 retained in there. And then if we do our multiply, we get 12, and that is put in stack level 1. So I guess you could kind of think of stack level 1 as a Y on the, on the uh, 12C, but yet it's not Y because if you actually do that multiplication, the 12 will end up being an X. So it's a little bit confusing, a little bit, if you're used to the older calculators and you've never used one of the single line HP calculators before. Uh, personally, it's easier for me to see the stack with a bigger screen because it's all there. But if you only have a single line, HP does it very, very slightly differently, and so your understanding of the X and Y registers on the 12C uh, become important because unlike this calculator on the 12C, you're not able to see all of the stack levels all at once. And of course on this calculator you can uh, type in another number and enter it, and another number and enter it, and another number and enter it, and then you've got four, four and you can even type another number here, and then keep going if you want to, and then you can just type in plus, 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 and then you get 40. But on the 12C, uh, you're not able to do that. For example, you want to add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You can't do that in the same way you would on the 48GX because the stack levels are limited. I'll show you what happens. You type in 1 and you enter it. And on the 48GX, that's going to be on stack level 1. You type in 2 and you enter it. And that's going to move everything up a stack. 3, enter it. 4, enter it. 5, enter it. Well, 1 through 5, well, we'll do 6 also. 1 through 6 on the 48GX would all be in their own stack levels. But on this calculator, they aren't because there are not that many stack levels. Uh, so basically, what you have are the last two entries that you entered. And we can confirm that by doing a swap. And of course, as I said before, uh, the reason it's not displaying 5 is because once you punch in the number, even before you hit enter, that number is placed on stack level x, which is the lowest level. And then if you enter it, that number is saved in the y register, which is 1 up, and also in x. <laughs> so that's why when we swap, we're actually swapping the x and y, but 6 is stored in both x and y. So again, this is a fundamental difference here 
between multi-level uh, stat calculators like the 48GX or 50G. Now, of course, the video you're watching now is about the 12C, not about other calculators, but since I'm already comparing my 48GX and 50G and so on, I might as well, I'm sure you saw this on my wrist, explain what this is. This is a Casio databank calculator watch. All of the nitty-gritty details about this are in a link in the text description, so you can still buy these today, actually. And uh, it's a pretty nifty calculator watch that displays the time, the date. Um, it also has a little light, but the reason I bought it especially is because it's got a 10-year battery life. So long as you don't use the backlight too much, yeah, the battery is very similar to the 1980s uh, 12C in that it will last and keep going and going and going. And it's got a bunch of features. You can easily switch to military time. Uh, it's got a database. you got people's phone numbers. You've got, um, we can say, eight times eight equals 64, right? So of course, this is not RPN. This is uh, algebraic, you know, it's just, just your standard calculator, but the buttons are kind of hard to push. But the benefit of that is if you bump up against something, you're not actually, you're not accidentally going to change modes or anything like that. And um, I would say, you know, it's got alarms, it's got a stopwatch. I use this most often, actually. Uh, even though I've got an iPhone, there are times that you don't have your iPhone handy. Maybe it's charging, and if you've got this on your wrist, you can just start and stop. And it's very, very convenient. It even has a lap timer. So many different features. You, you should check out uh, uh, the link that I put for you in the text description below. Okay, now let's try something a little bit fun yet useful. Sometimes you want to know the number of days between two dates, maybe for fun, maybe for something practical. And of course, for interest calculations, sometimes you actually need to know the number of days. Now, if you have an iPhone, you can just ask Siri, and I know that it's convenient to do that. But again, one of the reasons to have a dedicated calculator like this is to be distraction free, to get away from the internet, to get away from your computer and iPhones and just do the math. So how do you do date range calculations on the 12C Platinum or the 12C. And that's what I'm going to show you now. First of all, we want to clear out the, the memories here to make sure everything is clear, as we always do. And we want to make sure that it is set in month, day, year format. And to make absolutely sure of that, you just do the blue G and then the number 5, because underneath it, it says M dot day. So that sets us up month, day, year format, so we know how to plug in the dates now. And uh, I'm going to do approximately the number of days that I've been alive. Now, I'm not going to tell you my exact birth date because, you know, I don't want to really reveal that over the Internet. So I'm going to pick a date in 1971 that's close enough. January 1st, 1971 is, you know, reasonably close to my actual birth date. So that's going to be our starting date. And so to type in the date, again, we're doing a month, day, year, and we want to do the month first. So January is one, and then we do a decimal. And then we're going to say the first, so zero, one, don't forget your zero there. And then 1971 was my birth year, and we want to enter that. Now we're going to do the ending date, which is today's date as of the shooting of this particular clip. And that is October. So we type in 10, then our decimal. And then it's the 8th today, so 08-2020. Now we don't hit enter in this case. We want to do delta days, which is at the bottom of the EEX key, which means blue G, EEX. And what do you know? It says 18,178 days, approximately, that I have been on planet Earth. Pretty neat. Now, the other interesting thing is that sometimes when you're calculating interest, you need to use 30-day months. 30-day months. And as you know, the months are not all 30 days. 
but all you have to do is just press this XY key here, and that tells you the total number of days between January 1st, 1971 and today, October 8th, 2020, assuming that we had 30-day months. Pretty interesting, right? Now, this calculator, of course, accounts for leap years. It accounts for all of that. So uh, if you want to just type the same thing into Google or verify this is correct between the date range I just told you, you can, and actually I did that, and it is accurate. So yeah, it does automatically account for those, which is pretty neat. Now one last trick that I'll show you is how to adjust the contrast. This is a feature that is specific to the Platinum version uh, that you will not have on the regular 12C. We can just type in some number here, press the F key and hold it, and then press plus or minus depending on whether you want to increase or decrease the contrast. So if we do that, this key and minus, it's a little hard to see the difference, but when I do it all the way to the plus, you can kind of see the faint, it, it, the numbers get darker and then you can kind of see the faint outlines of the numbers that are not being displayed on the LCD. So this lets you adjust the contrast. In most cases, it probably doesn't matter, but it's just kind of a neat feature if you're looking at it from an angle. Now it's time for me to bring this video to a close and share my thoughts on the HP 12C Platinum. Suffice it to say, if you do a lot of finance or business-related calculations, the 12C is made for you. Some of you might say, yeah, but until now, you know, I've used my computer, I've used my smartphone, why do I need a 12C? And the answer is twofold. First of all, the 12C series is completely distraction-free. No Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi, no internet. Set that computer aside. Get rid of that smartphone, hunker down, and do some real work. Even if you disable notifications on your iPhone or on your Mac or on your PC, you're still tempted to click on something, right? Uh, you're still tempted to get your mind drawn away from your work. But with the 12C, it's a dedicated calculator so you can more uh, focus on what you need to do. So that's the number one reason. And I think for that reason alone, you might consider buying one. But there is another reason. If you're going to be taking one of the uh, dedicated finance exams that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, not the SAT for high schoolers or anything like that, but one of the dedicated finance exams, then uh, for that reason alone, you might want to have one because your iPhone is not certified for those tests, but the 12C and 12C Platinum are. And the 12C is, uh, you know, it's you saw how, how small it is. It can fit in a shirt pocket. It's just as portable, if not more so, than an iPhone. So um, it's not going to really be that bothersome uh, to carry around uh, with you. Now, if you have a uh, calculator, like I showed in my video, like a 50G, 50G or 48GX or another uh, older HP calculator, you might say, well, you showed time value of, of money calculations in this video, so why do I really need 12C? Now, some of you are collectors, and I don't even need to answer that because you know you want to just collect another HP calculator if you don't already have one, so maybe that's a sufficient reason for you, but I'm a man of practicality, so I want to tell you that yes, there are some features that overlap between the 12C series and your other calculators. However, there are a lot of finance related features that are built in to the 12C, which are not built in to calculators like the 50G or 48GX. And although you could program some of them in, it's troublesome, it's time consuming. And um, why not just get you know a smaller and if I can call it that cute, cuter <laughs> calculator, because this really is, it, it's, it's much smaller and much lighter to carry around than the other traditional um, elongated body style uh, calculators are. And there's a reason why that HP still sells these going on 40 years now, because uh, it's, it's just very, very convenient uh, to have. Uh, so I think even if you have uh, some of the older HP calculators, the 12C series, 
is still something you, that you might want to consider. Now, street prices that you're going to find on Amazon or other places like that as of October 2020, the making of this video or is uh, for the Platinum series, which has the uh, silver around the LCD. Uh, this goes for roughly $50. And the gold surround is the regular 12C, and that goes for $10 more at $60. For the additional ten dollars, you're going to get a much faster processor. But in my opinion, in my test calculations, it really doesn't matter. You know, this calculator is not displaying that running "please wait" message very often at all. So I really don't think you're going to be missing anything by getting the cheaper version. In fact, you're going to be getting something, as I mentioned in this video already. You've got the contrast adjustment, which you don't have on the regular 12C. Uh, also on the Platinum. If have you ever? accidentally type the wrong key on your keyboard? It's kind of a funny question, but yes, of course you have. Or mistype something on a calculator. Well, if you have, the Platinum is better than the regular 12C because it has backspace. It has that undo delete set of features. So for that reason, I think that um, the Platinum really is a good choice. But in the text description below, I've put a lot of links for you that compare features side by side uh, between the two calculators so that you can uh, look at that and decide for yourself whether it's really beneficial or not for you to buy the gold. I mean, maybe you just like gold. And if so, well, it's going to cost you $10 more. Uh, so you can decide it that way. Um, but there's one other piece of information in the text description below that I'm going to mention. And that is, you can actually try before you buy in the convenience of your own home without installing any apps at all using a web browser. Mac, PC, doesn't matter. And those links that I provided for you are for the 12C emulator and the 12C Platinum emulator. And it emulates pretty much every function of the real calculators, except for things like screen contrast, because you know on an emulator, you're not, you don't have a real LCD, so you don't have that. And it doesn't emulate the reset button that you press under the battery door. But except for those two things, you know, it pretty much um, is identical to the actual calculator. So what I would suggest is you click on the other links in the text description, which I gave you links to the documentation and sample problems. And you just go through some of those sample problems or think about the work that you do if you do finance or business calculations and try out the calculator in your own web browser. And that will really help you decide, I think, uh, on whether you want to buy the calculator or not. Now, some of you probably, I'm kind of foreseeing the future here, down in the comments, you're going to say, yeah, but what about Swiss micros? Okay, uh, for those of you who, who've never heard the name Swiss Micros before, it's a company who makes clones of a lot of HP calculators, especially calculator models that HP does not make anymore, but yet were popular back in the day and which people today still want to buy. And they have a model number DM12L, like the letter L, uh, which is a clone of the 12C. And you can buy that today, but the disadvantage is that it costs about twice. Uh, the 12C price. Now, some I, I don't actually, uh, full disclaimer, I don't own any Swiss Micros uh, calculators at all, so owners of them might wish to point out some you know, beneficial differences, and that's why you would want to pay more. But in my opinion, if you want to just do basic finance calculations, I, I don't see the reason to spend all that money. However, however, I did see on their website that they have a DM12 with no L at the end. And it is even smaller than this. Yeah, it, it is um, uh, credit card size. But on the website, they say, well, it's out of stock. So I wrote the company and Michael very kindly replied back to say, well, it's undergoing a major redesign right now. It's not going to be available for the next six months. So you might want to check back around April 2021 to see if that calculator is out. Because if you want something even more portable than the 12C Platinum that I reviewed in this video, that might be it. But again, expect to pay twice as much for it. Uh, they're going to need to recoup their costs back for it. And because I don't own any Swiss Micros calculators, I cannot tell you how do the keys feel, how do they sound, and all of that. Um, until the day I actually get one of those calculators, I'm not going to be able to say much more. But I just kind of wanted to preempt you for those of you who say, what about Swiss Micros? Now, I wish to formally thank Mark Jositis because he made this video possible. He did not sponsor this video. No exchange of cash was made at all. Uh, but he just said, hey, if I send you my spare, you think you'd want to review it? And 
Um, I, of course, <laughs> yeah, I said yes, and one thing led to another, and he shipped it off to me. And that's kind of an interesting, interesting story, too, because he told me that he shipped it by USPS. So uh, you've probably heard all the things going on in the news about the Postal Service and ballots for the no November presidential election and all that. Uh, so it was taking kind of a long time to get to me, and we both were watching, after a while, the USPS tracking page, and there's just a huge number of entries in there. It shipped out from his, his residence in Indiana to Ohio, and then it shipped out of Ohio, went back to Indiana, and then it shipped out of Indiana and went to Chicago, and it stayed there for a while, and then went back to Indiana, but then it went back to Chicago again. <laughs> And finally, it got shipped off to Japan, and after 20 days, it, it finally arrived here, and thankfully, the package was all intact, and there wasn't any problem, but uh, I don't know if it's COVID-19, if it's the riots, if it's both, but suffice to say, I've been living in Japan continuously since 1994, shipping to and from the U.S., and I've never had a package uh, sent by the same method that took that long before. So if you're shipping any packages out of the U.S., I would say <laughs> expect them to take a bit longer <laughs> than normal. Um, also, uh, Mark uh, said for, it was okay for me to retain this calculator for about a month after the posting of this video on YouTube. So if you have any questions that are pertaining to this calculator that you cannot answer for yourself by using the emulators, and yeah, I'm encouraging you to try to answer your own questions through the emulators first, then you can ask me in the comments. But keep in mind, I'm an electrical engineer. I'm not a CPA. I'm a doctor, not an escalator. And I don't do homework, you know, for people or anything like that. Uh, but if there's something you want me to touch the keys, you know, and give you more detail than I gave you in my video, something I can tell you about the physical calculator itself. Um, I don't want to open it though, because I'd have to pull off the rubber feet to do that. So I'm not gonna do that type of thing for you, but I'm gonna keep it for a month. So if you have specific questions, I can answer those. And then after that month is expired, I will be shipping this back to Mark and hopefully USPS will do its job and get it back to him uh, intact. I hope so, Mark. <laughs> um, now I'd also like to uh, uh, say thank you to a couple people who contributed to this YouTube channel by PayPal. Uh, Dave K, I'd like to say a big thank you. He didn't want me to mention his full name, but uh, thank you for your contribution. And there is a husband and wife couple. They didn't want me to really recognize them by name. Um, but I just wish to thank them as well because they made it a PayPal contribution. Uh, one of my iMac video card bake videos helped them to do a DIY repair and get their iMac back up and running again. And it always makes me feel good uh, to hear those stories of success about people getting their vintage machines uh, back up and running. So. Thank you both uh, for your contributions by PayPal. Now, if you appreciated the content of this video and uh, you were benefited by this review, please consider clicking on that thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more videos like this, I'd certainly appreciate you clicking the subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching and I wish each and every one of you a wonderful day.